Hello yummy mummies and chara cheek chummies. How are you doing today? Please excuse the noise in the background. That is my toddler who's getting really excited, rather excited and playing. Glad to see that she's actually playing by herself and not on the screen. And uh, yeah, so just please excuse the noise. Also, still waiting for the ring light. I have no idea where that's gone. So again, the lighting's not great, but not much I can do about it at the moment. What else? Oh yes, I accidentally and rather stupidly deleted a couple of my videos last night, which, oh, I just, I can't believe that YouTube makes it so easy to delete videos. I can't believe it's not password protected or something like that. So anyway, yes, I think there were a couple. It was Cornwall and the other one was What's In My Handbag. And I'm going to try and re-upload those today, but unfortunately it takes most of the day just to upload a 10 minute video, which is frustrating beyond belief. Because as usual, we still don't have fast internet out here and it's very unlikely we will do. Ugh, excuse me. She's, play she's playing with Zoe Zebra, I think. Right outside the door. Makes it very hard to concentrate when she's making lots of noise. And Daddy is not doing his his daddy duties. Anyway, oh yes, the other thing was, I am happy because I have finally managed to get my hair long enough to go into an old hairstyle of mine, which is one of my favourite and more easy ones to do, which I might have done a tutorial about it actually quite a while ago. So it might be worth checking that out. I think it's like three simple hairstyles or something. That's going back a good few years. Anyway, as I always say at the beginning of each video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and if you feel that this video may be beneficial to someone else, then please don't forget to share. I must also add as well um, that there is a trigger warning here. I do not want to upset anyone or offend anyone. So if you are pregnant or are of a sensitive disposition, then please, please, please do not watch this video. The last thing I want to do is intentionally upset or offend anyone. And this vlog is basically just about, it's just for information. And also it would be nice to hear from other mummies that have gone through the birth experience and any positive birth stories, etc. Anyway, I have two children. One is a toddler, as you can hear, and one is a baby. And basically with the first one she was an assisted birth i did hit my birthing and i'm i still have very mixed feelings about it because at the beginning i was very calm but as i got on and on and on and longer and longer into labor the less calm i got so with her i my waters break 3 p.m. the Sunday after my dad's birthday, which was the Saturday, and drove to the hospital. They said, oh, you better come in because your waters have break, which I understand that if your waters break, you are at a higher risk of infection. I might be wrong. I might have got that wrong. And anyway, I went to in and I was all geared up and ready and waiting and waiting and waiting. Had a bath which was run by one of the midwives, the one um, wants to say hello to Jane by the way. She's absolutely fabulous. She was a midwife that delivered my daughter. And um, failure to progress basically. My, my labour started, I had a few twinges, I had the water break obviously and then nothing happened. So they said to me on Monday morning, by which time I'd been up all night, well, we're going to have to induce you, so you're going to have to come down to the labour ward. The problem was that they were short staff, so I had to wait. By the time I got down there, it was the afternoon, and I was knackered by that point. I was really tired. And then they put me on a drip. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. The, the name escapes me, but basically they put me on a drip. And then after a while, they said... They just monitored me, which was really good. I had another student nurse called Sarah who was really good. She sat there and she monitored everything, monitored me, monitored the baby, and I was literally just lying there for ages. I remember this. And about an hour before, my partner was sort of 
sort of started smiling going oh, I'm gonna be a father I'm gonna be a father I was just thinking I think he's actually going slightly crazy now and about an hour before they said Jane came in she said right you're gonna have to start pushing and she's it's about time you've got to start pushing you've you've dilated so I started pushing and pushing and pushing and nothing was really happening and I remember also being really hungry because I think I wasn't allowed to eat anything which was horrible <laughs> heavily pregnant and starving is not good and after about an hour Jane said Claire you've been pushing for an hour and basically she was sort of saying we need to hurry this along we need to get some kind of assistance and I felt disappointed I'd really wanted a hypnobirth I'd really wanted relaxed and everything like that and it just kind of went out the window and I think although it's good to have a birth plan always good to have one it doesn't always go to plan and anyway I said okay I'm gonna have to get some help and and my partner sort of said are you sure about this are you sure and I, I think by that time I was just exhausted. I was absolutely, I have never been so tired in all my life. And anyway, a very nice doctor came in and I think a chaperone came in as well. And they had to give me an episiotomy. So he gave me this episiotomy. And then suddenly this little person looked straight at me. She looked me straight in the eye. I didn't know what sex I was having. So my partner said, it's a girl. And, and I just, I, I was just overjoyed but also absolutely exhausted and anyway had the cele celebration I had the uh, the shower and I had the oh that walk after lying down for so long to the shower and it's not that far either I had a uh, toast jam on toast that was the best toast ever thanks Jane really really enjoyed that and a cup of tea by which time it was midnight and she was born about half eleven and I was exhausted and funnily enough my cousin Liza also had had her little boy it was really funny I didn't really know Liza at the time because I've got quite a big network of cousins and um, she actually had her son an hour and a half before Molly which was really funny I wish I had known her because that would have been quite fun to compare so that happened and then obviously we were wheeled back to the maternity ward and partner went home and part of me wished he kind of stayed but I wasn't sure what the rules were and I was in a room alone with Molly and then basically Judith came in, my other midwife who I've got to know quite a few midwives because they put up with a lot of rubbish from me. Um, obviously being in there quite a lot where I was ill with the second one and so forth and she said uh, I'm not quite happy with Molly she's very very quiet so I'm gonna take her to Nikki and that's when they found that she had the group B strep, strep B group B strep infection and I was quite poorly as well and I had an infection but I talk about that in another video so if you want to know more about group B strep please do go onto that video on my channel. So that was her, and I must say, and I think I've said this before actually, I'm very grateful to Judith for being on the ball to, to find out that things weren't quite right. So thank you, Judith. And anyway, so that went, and you, I thought about having a, when you, when you have a birth, you can have like a debriefing. So you can go and see maybe the senior midwife and talk through what happened in your birth. And I thought, should I do that? No, no, I'll, I'll leave it. And I thought with the second one, okay, people were saying sometimes the baby, the second one is larger, but it's easier to give birth. And I thought, great, fabulous. I've been through it once. How bad could it be? how bad could it be i told you this is a trigger warning if you don't want to hear anymore then please if you're pregnant sensitive again i'm warning you now just switch off or go and check out one of my funny videos or one of my lighter videos anyway i have warned you so here's the second one the second one obviously you know that i was 
I had a parathyroidectomy, which would still have the scar uh, very poorly. Again, that's in other videos, which I'm not going to go into great detail about because I've already vlogged about them. But basically, we're, with him, I had to be induced by my due date. Me. Yes. Me. Yes. Me. Yes. What do you want, dear? What do you want? There's Are you going shopping? There's some shopping. You going shopping? Go and ask Daddy for some shopping. Yes. And some money. No. Mummy hasn't got any. I'll get some money. No. No. Why not? What? Because it's Daddy and he hasn't got any. Like Mummy. <laughs> Bless her. Anyway, so yes, for the second one, they said, I'm not being funny. My doctor said, I'm not being funny, Claire, but you are actually quite small and this baby is getting bigger and bigger and he is going to come out. He has got to come out either which way kind of thing. So I was initially going to be induced February the 11th, but I thought, well, I may as well just go in and be induced and get it started because there, there was no way because of my age because of his size because I was quite small etc they just said there's no way you're going to go over your due date there is absolutely no way it's t it's basically too risky and I did ask the doctor what the risks were and he just reeled off all these risks and I was thinking crikey okay I'm not going to I'm not going to risk it and I think also when you as other heavily pregnant ladies and pe ladies that have given birth, I think you get to that point where you're just like, oh, get this baby out of me. Anyway, I went in and I think I had a chest infection. That was it. I had a chest. Oh, I was so ill. I had chest infection, coughing up blood. And I had to go and see the doctor. And maternity said, right, you can come in to be induced, but you'll have to see the doctor first to get some antibiotics. So I went and did that. I went to hospital absolutely dreading it. First person I saw was my old midwife, Jane, who I was, oh my goodness, I was so grateful to see, I think it was Jane, was it Jane? Was it not? Or was that another time? Anyway, I was really grateful to see her. And anyway, went in, got put in a little room, and they induced me, yeah, I think it was either Tuesday or Wednesday, and they induced me on the Wednesday with a pessary. Didn't work. He did not want to come, and I, do you blame him? cosy warm safe what more could you want food on tap and uh anyway he did not want to come so they said well we're going to give it another day we're going to give you a day's break i was like oh you're so so kind and uh friday had another lot and again nothing and anyway i was getting a little bit fed up and it was really quite ill with his chest infection actually and my midwife oh my goodness there was another midwife who told me off which I'm glad she did Tina that's it Tina said well you've got to take these she said because I'm sick of the coughing basically just threw them at me and was like take these antibiotics and I'm glad she did because it wasn't nice although I'm not obviously keen on antibiotics I was to that point where I was just like you know what I have to I can't go on like this so anyway, that happened, and then I think the doctor came in, doctor on duty, and he said, you are going to have to have a cesarean. If this baby does not turn up by tomorrow, i.e. Saturday, you are going to have to have a cesarean. And that's, I never wanted one, and I must admit that I thought after the first birth, it'd be fine, I won't need one, it's unlikely. Boy, was I wrong. Anyway... 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. Friday, I was getting quite fed up and I've been in hospital quite a while and I'm, I've been in hospital a lot and although I'm grateful for fairly okay health, I'm just like, ugh. Oh. I went to the loo, I went to the loo and then my plug came and I was just like, oh my goodness, didn't know what was going on, all over the floor. Sorry, I did say this is rather graphic and midwife Sally came in and she said oh my goodness she said I'm so glad we were just talking about what we were going to do with you how what we were going what was going to happen and so glad that this has happened we're going to get you down to the labour ward I thought great we're in business fantastic anyway I went in there and then they said 
I was waiting a while, they got me the drip, drip, got everything ready. Obviously, if you've had group B strep in your first birth or you're prone to it, or there's any risk of it, you get antibiotics on your drip as well, so I had that. The oil in business felt great. Then they said, oh, there is, I'm just going to, oh, break your waters. That was it, I'm gonna break your waters. Three people tried to break my waters. Not, well, not, wasn't gonna happen. So the doctor came, she did it. The worst thing, I'm sorry, but it was just the worst thing in the world. It was really uncomfortable and very unpleasant. The doctor was lovely. She came in, she did it. It was horrible. And then after a while they said, you still got some waters. You still got some water. I think there was like another bit or something and we're gonna have to break it. So I had to do that. I had this with the first one as well. I had two lots of water to be broken. So after that happened, I thought, great, okay, we're in, okay. And another midwife came in later. She said, oh, I reckon a few hours, a couple of hours, a couple of pushes, and he'll be out. I thought, fabulous, brilliant. And then it all just went a bit horrible. And Danielle, the midwife, came in and said, your baby's in fetal distress. And then the doctor came in and said, we need to do an emergency cesarean and I was gutted. I've got to be honest, I was gutted. I trusted these guys and know they knew what they were talking about. I know that obviously I have got to put baby first and the last thing I would want to do at all is cause any harm or anything just by being stubborn and trusting their instincts, trusting what they were saying to me. But it just felt like my world had kind of crashed a little bit, as awful as that, as awful as that sounds. And anyway, they took me straight down to surgery and because it oh, this is so embarrassing but because i had nothing too gory don't worry for a change in this in this vlog because i had a chest infection that i was flat on the table and i just wanted to get up and cough and i couldn't and i kept saying can i get up can i get up and they were like no no not, not long and i said how long not long not long and the anaesthetist i didn't realize this he said i'll give you something to relax you a little something to relax you they actually put me out without telling me i i was put out after little boy was born and gave him a kiss but I was just so out of it and he was wrapped up and he was like Ehh! and um, gave him to daddy and then I just was put out and I woke up a couple of hours later didn't know what the hell was going on and apparently that the little one had come out with his the cord tight uh, not tightly loosely wrapped around his neck so yes I think they definitely acted in the best interests Recovery time is difficult. It it was probably more uncomfortable with the episiotomy. Physically, it was quite uncomfortable for quite a while, but it wasn't as long as the effects that I'm having from the cesarean. And obviously it's nine months now, but I'm still getting a bit sore and things. I'm still feeling a little bit out of sorts. And I think the frustrating thing was as well, if you have a cesarean, as a lot of you may already know, you can't actually lift anything, you can't drive, you can't do anything. And it's just me and my partner at home. And that was really tough. That was really tough. Would I do it all again? Well, I've got to say, I'm definitely done with children now. I do not want any more. And also, while well, I'm a bit older, I haven't got the energy. And I think my partner forgets that being a bit younger. And I, f I think I find it doubly tough. I think in an ideal world, I wish that I had had them younger, but I didn't meet the right person until when I was older. Anyway, I can't fault St Mary's Hospital maternity. I've not had any seriously bad issues, apart from a couple of minor things, which I'm not going to describe here about maternity. But I did want to say again, thank you to Judith and... Sharon and Jane and Sally as well so I hope that this has been informative but I must say don't ever feel there's two points I want to say you're working as part of a team and don't forget that and it's teamwork and it's you and baby and your partner whoever else is there it's all part of being a team and coming together as a team the second point I also want to make is don't ever feel pushed into anything but also be sensible about it. Remember it's your body, not anybody else's. It's your body and it's your baby and you've got to do what's right for both of you. And that's all I'm going to advise on the matter. If there's any other questions or anything else, 
don't forget, as I said at the beginning, to comment below. We'd like to hear from you. We'd like to hear about your birth stories. Uh, it would be really interesting to hear what they were like. And I'd also like to say thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon.